Hello everyone, this is Becky here at Aunt Bex Creations, and this is an impromptu live session. Um, it is live, so I am going to be talky, and nothing is going to be sped up. It's going to be done in real time. So if you are expecting a very fast process video, this is not for you. Um, paper piecing takes time and effort. So bear with me. I'm just going to work on Tippy. Um, hi, Mary Lou. I'm going to, this is his cute little face. And I'm going to, I have it propped up here to kind of help guide me into values. I've kind of marked out some of the spots, uh, you know, where his dark hair is and kind of the shadows are. But I like having the photo to refer back to as well. So basically, I'm just tracing an image of my cat and then filling it in with paper. So it's like a puzzle, but with no pieces except what I come up with. Hi, Mina. So I said, you know, I'm going to work on that. I might as well do it live. And then if anybody wants to see it, they can sit and watch or watch the replay and if you're watching the replay you can speed me up i mean that's your prerogative that's it's there so you can that's fine mary lou hi janet so i'm gonna get some glue all here i think what i'll do first is work on his dark spots because he doesn't have as many as howard and I've just got a variety of different values here. And I have a storm moving in, of course, since I decided to do an impromptu. So we'll see what happens with that. And I'm just using glue all. Oh, here comes that storm. Hopefully I won't get knocked off. If I get knocked off, um, we'll see how bad I get knocked off, put it that way. I needed to have a wet one out to kind of clean my fingers off every once in a while. I've got those right here. They're a lot of fun to do. Shell C got me thinking I could do it. Hi, Brittany. So I said, well, if Shell can do it, I can do it if I just try. You won't know if you can do something until you try, right? And I did learn something during the hop that I wanted to share with you guys, that if you're going to decide to do one of these, try not to go too heavy with the glue and get it too wet because the um, tracing paper will stretch. That's how Howie got to be so much bigger than Callie because I was real careful when I did Callie and I was trying to rush when I was doing Howard, so it pays to go slower. So just put a little glue on and then I spread it out with my finger. I'm off camera, but I'm just spreading it out across the piece. So I hope everybody's having a good day. Hi, Rose City Crafter. I am doing a, a canvas of my cat, Tippy because I've already, I'll show the ones that hadn't seen the hop last week. Let me grab um, Howard and Callie's um, canvases. So you guys all know that are coming in that didn't see the hop last week. I was in a hop last week and I did Howard during the hop. But these are what I'm working on. So this one's Callie, of course, and this one's Howard. And so I'll have the three of them next to the actual picture of them I have in a frame. So that's what I'm working on. And I have a canvas for Tippy. I just got to get him on the this paper, cut him out, and then glue him to his canvas. So I thought I could share the time with anybody that had some time available and wanted to hang. 
Thank you, Janet. So that is what we are working on. We are doing um, painty paper collage. I'm trying not to get the um, paper too wet. That was a big boo-boo bo last week. Hi, Kathleen. If I miss anybody, you are very welcome here. And I thought um, this would be more of a chatty video where I could actually chat with those. And so if you had burning questions to ask me, this would be a good time to do it. And don't, if you're doing these, don't worry about it overlapping. It just gives it more texture. Janet, it's not really a sketch. I traced him. <laughs> I'm not as good as uh, Shell. Shell can, um, she just draws whatever she wants to do and then goes at it. So I just took, I took one of the pictures. I had a tippy and printed it off and I put the tracing paper over it and then held it up to the window and just traced him out. And again, like I said during the hop last week, don't worry about going off the edge of the paper because we'll just trim all that away. And um, if you're working on the outer edge along, you can let it go beyond the lines. I think I've got my edge lines dark enough to where when I go to cut him out, it won't be a problem. Yeah, this one is actually different from the picture that's in the, in the frame that I have. Um, when I get these done and I hang them, I'll show you guys um, them installed in the den. So you guys will get to see, you know, the finished ones next to their photos in a um, frame I have in the, in the den. But I got to thinking, you know, I got to get that off my table because it's so close. The set is close so close to being done. Now, Kathy said, now I know you have more than three cats that live, live there. So what I'm thinking for Greg's cats is I might take individual photos and then combine them into one large canvas. So he only has to hang one, one of his cat, one, one canvas is what I'm trying to spit out. And I need to write their names on the back of these. That storm sounds ugly. But, you know, last night we had a storm that sounded ugly and absolutely nothing came of it. Nothing. It just made a whole lot of noise for nothing. All right. So there's one dark might do just a tiny little strip over here. Yeah, he had his, his eyes closed all lovey-dovey in this one. And in the other picture that's in the frame, his eyes are wide open. But the other two cats, I actually used the same picture that's in the frame, which I thought was funny that I did that. So Tippy will look like a wise guy. I'm glad I let Bernadette go out when I did because she would not want to be out here, out there now. Greg cooked a bunch of um, food up. He made he made um, some sweet potato pies and some hamburger like biscuit things he did like a whole sheet of little hamburgers and took them in to the cleaning crew which is all these lovely hispanic ladies that get treated like dirt so greg's always trying to do something to make them know that he, that he, they are appreciated by at least one there and um one of the ladies wasn't there and he asked about her 
and um, her son had actually been in a car accident. So Greg was going to make another pie and take it just for her and her family. So he's got a kind heart. Proud of him for that. But I was asking him if, hi Janice. Yeah, he made little sliders and took them in. Um, I forget what I tried to call them. He had leftover heavy cream in the refrigerator and I have peaches that we got that are going bad faster than we can eat them. And I asked him about the heavy cream and I said, thinking of making some homemade peach ice cream like a, a treat for us for being good the rest of the day. Scott's being a trooper. He's eating anything I cook. So he's eating the vegetarian meals. He said that first week he really missed the regular way of eating, whatever that means, and uh, was kind of missing, you know, his bacon and egg and that kind of stuff. But trying to get him his sugar under control, he currently does not take anything for his diabetes. He's type 2, just like me. His doctor wants him to get down to 180 pounds. So I'm doing all I can to help him get there and cooking proper, you know, meals. Hi, Ann. Ann, let me tell you something I did. I made that Jamaican black beans, but we added corn to it. Oh, my word. It is so good. <laughs> It is so good. I will definitely do that again. Let's see here. It was so good. And then we had some corn chips and I ate it like dip yesterday. Yeah, last night, that was my supper for last night with some leftovers of that. And I said, hmm, corn chips. And so I just used it like a dip, made a great dip. I think that Jamaican black bean dish might be, if I go to a family event again, I might take that because I think everybody would enjoy it. I don't know, uh, Janet. Hmm. It might work, you know, if you put the black beans in a um, processor. I want some of that that looks kind of grayish. It might actually work. We went to uh, all these today. I'm having trouble with my words, so I got to quit trying to quit tr saying uh. And we got some vegetables and uh, frozen fruit. They have the best price on the bags of frozen fruit. And see, I put fruit on our oatmeal every morning. We have some kind of fruit on the oatmeal. And then I top that with some kind of nut, like almonds or walnuts or pecans or pecans, depending on who you are and how you're saying it. Does he have any of that? He does have a little bit of gray along the other side, too. 
Do I have any more of that silver? This is leftover bits from the other day. No. Oh. Well, that's a little bit right there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If you smash the beans up, it might just work. Put a little bit of glue here. This really looks weird when you're working with just the paper, but I'm telling you, it, it it's almost like magic when you start adding the, oh, there's more gray right there. When you start adding the white for the whiskers and the eyebrows and all the little little hairs in his ear and that kind of stuff with your Posca pen, it really brings it to life. Let's see here. I might cut this with scissors to get the shape of his eyes down. Let's see. Sorry, I got to processing in my brain. Black bean patties, Ann is saying. Black beans are such an earthy um, bean. Earthy and hearty bean. Got my little thing here again. Right. His eyes really are like little slits here. Whoops. Where'd it go? Oh, it's on my finger. <laughs> I couldn't find it there for a minute. So is anybody doing any special art this week? Are you involved in any swaps or are there any challenges out there? Share if you know of a challenge or something that somebody might be interested in doing. I know the folks over on the sewing channels, they have like different little challenges that show up over on uh, Instagram.
the little spatula things come in handy. Now he, the, the part that comes down this way is almost pink. So I was thinking of using some of these pinky colors, but let's finish all the dark spots first and let this glue settle so I'm not shifting the his eyes all over the place. Although this does need to go up some. Not that much. There we go. Excuse me. Kathleen's doing the iCADs for June and July. And Janice needs to finish her iCADs. I started doing the 52 tags. Uh, um, the slow stitching 52 tag thing. But then I just got all sidetracked. And I started doing um, Dee Dee's project. And I got all sidetracked. I'm not very good at about following through. I'm trying to force myself, make myself stick with our summer journal challenge because I think what happens is I see what everybody else is doing, then I'm ready to move on. But I'm trying to take to heart the lessons the girl is teaching in that book because She really focuses a lot on being aware of your surroundings and seeing art everywhere you are. So like in the newspaper, in those free weekly um, little magazines that most cities have that tell you, you know, the events that are going to be coming up. Look for the art in the even if it's just a newspaper, because that's where our project for this week is coming from is from the. South Carolina, 101 Things to Do in South Carolina, like free magazine. So don't, don't um, poo poo the free out, free bits. That's too, too little. Went too small. Let's try again. Let's just round the top edge off here. Bear with me for just a second. I am basing my whole idea on, it's right here, let me just grab it. No Excuses Art Journaling, Making Time for Creativity by Gina Rossi Armfield. This is the book I've been using, my summer journal project ideas. This is the, the book that got started with the summer journal. So a lot of the ideas are coming from there, but then I'm pulling in um, some of the techniques she does to find projects for us to do. And... Uh, we do a weekly watercolor. I think we might tie in some acrylic paint this week and do our ATC and acrylics instead of watercolor. I'll see what the majority says tomorrow. Now, because tomorrow at 3.30 is my weekly. Anybody that's available or wants to get. I have a room in Fibsville that I open up and Everybody that's a member of Fibsville is welcome to come in there. If you want to come in and aren't a member, it's real easy. You just have to answer some questions. And either Violet or Janet will get you right in. And uh, we just have a blast in the rooms, you guys. For anybody that hasn't played in, in, in a Facebook room, um, we share craft ideas and recipes and um, life and 
it's just fun. I enjoy them very much. I'm seeing now on this ear here, I have not gone up far enough. So let me add a bit, a bit more. It is an excellent book. I'm really pleased with that book. Anytime you go like on Amazon like that, always look for the used books because a lot of times you can get a used copy and the book is not, I mean, it doesn't have to be in pristine shape to be still be usable. I'm just going to glue this on right at the edge like that. And I can trim away the excess later when I cut him out. If I get all the really dark spots on first, then I'll do the shadows. and the pink in his ears and his nose. He has a very pink nose. And when you do these, if you outline your, whatever you're tracing out to do the collage on, if you make it a good dark line, then you can see it on the back so you can see where to cut him out. And then Anne on Thursdays, Anne has a room that opens up at 10 o'clock in the morning for anybody that's home and wants something to do. It is now pouring rain, which is good. Let's see. Let's move on. What else do I have? What, let's see. He's got, let's do the edges of his ears on the outside it's in shadow but it's in a kind of a gray pink color and i was thinking something more like this that's got a little bit of pink to it was what i'd use for as long his ears here so i need thin thin little bits of that and it can go off the edge of his ear because I'm going to trim it away anyway. And this goes all the way up his ear. So let me, and I don't really want the white paper. I'm going to cut that away where it's exposed a lot of white on the edge. Okay, so come up down to here. Uh, just put this on here. And I had quit doing my room in my group on Fridays because I'm doing Wednesday nights. So we we don't do anything on Fridays. Um, Nettie also has a room that um, she has opened from time to time. But I don't know that she has like a set schedule or anything. Um, she said she'd be in after her doctor's appointment. But it's usually... On Wednesday nights, you'll find Mary there and Ann Lar and Nettie. And then on Thursdays, Mary Lou shows up at Ann's. So who else is our regular? Our regulars? Violet. Violet's usually there every week doing her, her, um, Oh, what does she call those? Those buttons. What are they called again? Why can't I remember what those buttons are called that she does? Getting that some timers, right? Some timers. Sometimes I remember. Sometimes I don't. All the little pieces of paper that you think you won't use later. Door set buttons, that's them. 
Some days, some words are just hard to remember. I noticed Lizzie was having trouble with words herself this morning. Was, I caught some of Lizzie's morning stitching session. It's too wide. Might have to clean my fingers. They're getting kind of gluey and sticky. So I like to do the whole, one whole color of an area. Like I did all the darks. Now I'm doing all of this. I like to do this wherever it needs to be done before I move on to what's next to it. So it, and then let it dry and while I work on something else because then it has time to set up and see I'm going from kind of like a shadow color and then I'm getting a pinker. And then as it gets over this way, it'll go to this lighter pink. Kind of glad I only have one ear to do. Yes. The Dorset buttons. And they're really cool. All right, and now let's move into the, this other pink. Might use a bigger piece to cover more area. And I think I need to bring some more dark up in here. Let's do that real quick because I'm looking at the picture. And I think I need a piece that's more light silver like this. We'll just put this big piece on here. Glue on here for where it overlaps. Now I'll put that pink piece on that I set back down. Hi, Carol. You're stitching while you watch. I've enjoyed seeing your dolls that you've been stitching. Whispering Cauldron is Carol, and she's been doing these really pretty dolls and sharing the pictures. So if you haven't seen them, you should, should look up Carol. Whispering Cauldron. And I'm doing tippy today because I need to get this, this project finished so I can get them hung and off my table. welcome oh dear take a moment and really clean my hands good he'll look like he's sprouted growths but don't worry they get trimmed away okay He's out on the porch, but he can get where he's not getting wet. If I let him in, he'll be all in my business and I won't be able to do this. He'll be wanting to get in, in my arms laying on the table. I 
I'm beginning to think Nina's right, and I need to create a um, container herb garden because we sure are going through a lot of cilantro, and today I needed fresh basil. I didn't have any, so I used dry, and I'm telling you, there is a world of difference between <laughs> fresh herbs and dry ones. I just, oh. And I didn't have uh, any fresh corn, so I used quinoa, and it needed the corn. So it's not bad, but it's not as good as it could be if I'd had the correct ingredients. But some days you use what you have on hand. I'm pretty good at, uh, yes, there's a huge difference between fresh herbs and, and dried ones, that's for sure. I forgot what I was gonna say now. I'm pretty good at substitutions though. I like when you can get an area where you can use a little bit bigger pieces. <laughs> He's very pink. I want just this little bit right here, but I don't want all the little white edges, so we're going to cut those off. Just like that, the rain has stopped. Last night, I thought maybe I was getting rain that had hit Ann the other day. I saw Diane Fago had posted a video, and she's right out there near Mary. She posted some video of that new Nebraska that caused all that damage scary video. She's in the dark and it's just all lighting up. I don't like that little blue glob on there. So you know what we'll do? We'll cover it up with, with another little piece of paper. Because he doesn't have anything dark in his ear. So we'll just cover it up. I'm toying with the idea of joining the local arts community and make some stuff up to sell in their Christmas shop that they have. I have to get a business license and all of that. I don't know if I really want to do all that, but let's see. He's got a little pinkish area down in this spot here. I wonder if this whole piece could, if I trim the white away. Basil and parsley. Yes, this cookbook I'm using uses a ton of cilantro. So it's one of those things I most definitely should plant. I have some big pots that I brought back from the little house. We had moved most of our stuff to Greenville and we had it in the storage unit and all that. And then we had to move it all back because Scott's job went away and we just came back to the house we own. So, but the next time we move, if we move, I don't want to move it myself. The next move will be the last because I'm just not up to the change much. All right. So I know that looks kind of blobby and all, but it'll look fine. I promise you it'll be fine. All right. So he's got a little bit of pink line along his eye. And I thought... 
I cut a little sliver of this. I can actually cut this in half and probably have enough for both eyes. This uses all those teeny tiny little pieces that you thought you'd never use. This is the kind of project you need for to use those up. So here's two little red bits that go under his eyes. So we need to cut it right about there. It's hard for me to let you see what I'm doing when I'm working with something so small, but I'm just making like pink eyeliner here. And then we'll put that on. It won't need much glue, so let me see if I can just put just a little line of glue. And I'll look back at the chat in just a second. No pupils needed on these eyes because his eyes are this tightly closed. Oh, hang on, Mina. I grow a large crop of cilantro, then I chop it up and freeze it in ice cubes. Oh, cool. That's a cool idea. That way it doesn't go bad. Uh -oh. I'm going to run for the phone, but it'll probably be nothing. <sighs> Hello? I'm sorry, you have the wrong number. No, this is Rebecca McCauley. Uh-huh. Great. I wonder if that was a bill collector. She sounded disappointed. <laughs> no, I'm not Joan. Joan does not live here. Let's see here. Now he's got a little bit comes down from his eye. You know how cats will do here. Oh, come on. I need tweezers to hold these pieces. Yeah, that'll be perfect. Put a little glue. I'm going to stand up for a little while. Excuse me, for a little while because um, my legs are cramped. I was sitting with them up under me. My mother-in-law is constantly telling me I need to stop doing that. I figure as long as I can still do it, why not? I did buy some more asparagus so I can make that potato salad again that has the asparagus in it. 
because oh my goodness that was oh i just can't brag on that one enough that was that was so good you know what i shouldn't worry about getting these to the perfect side because i can always put white paper up over them i hadn't thought about that just a little bit of blue Sometimes I think, just put some glue out and with a, get a toothpick. But then the glue dries up on the paper before I can use it all. It needs to come down some. There we go. This definitely looks like my little wise guy. Oh, no, I tore it a little bit. All right. All right, let's do the pink on his nose now. The top of his nose. It's really kind of funny how he is. Because, see, it's kind of pinkish even up his nose here. But then it's got the white hairs on it. So what I was thinking is I would just put a big old piece of this pink up here and then draw his the little white hairs on it. I'm going to put a little baby bit to the bottom edge though so that you can see I kind of I'll have to put a second piece on, that's all. If I could zoom in, I would, but for some reason in my last update, now my um, all my controls for the camera that I had finally gotten access to, it doesn't work anymore. So I don't know, I don't know what happened with it. I use Linux and I had a, a free thing to go in search of a new camera control ability from somewhere. Let's take that yellow off. That'll work. I'll just overlap it. I really should be painting the ceiling out there in the bonus room. I have been working on the layout for Scott's stuff in my mind, and I need to go over that with him, but it, there's really no point in going to the effort of describing what I've got in mind until we get the ceiling painted. And... There was a section of the wall that we used some of the older paint that was bought for inside the house because we used the same color paint out there that we used for our kitchen area and our den. Well, it turns out it was more matte than the stuff we just bought. So I was told Scott what I would do is I would just quickly go over the area that where the older paint was used with a quick layer of the he put up and then it would all be the same it would be glossy across all right so now at the top of his nose there's a like a really thin line of this more reddish color but i was thinking i could just overlap it doesn't need to be that long i'll get this down here a little at a time and then if i need to i can put some of the lighter pink on top
and his nose really is kind of straight across at the top. I'm not going to worry about that. I'll just go over top of it, right? Come on, stick. Not to the knife. Urgh. There we go. Whew. Okay. Now we need a lighter pink for his nose. Maybe I should pull something out of the bags. Let's see here. Thought I had enough of the colors out. I could get his whole nose out of this piece right here. <laughs> Make it. Y'all bored with me? <laughs> it got quiet in the chat. Come on, get up in my hand. Stitching and watching. Okay, Carol, thank you. I know a lot of folks was watching Tanya, and that's perfectly fine. I just wanted to get this done and Violet's always t telling me, well, did you record it? And I was like, no, I just did it. And she's like, well, how am I supposed to watch it if you don't record it? So, Violet, I'm recording it. <laughs> you trying to find your table? Oh, I had to clear mine enough to find the supplies I needed for this. And my water glass is blinking at me. My sister got me, for anybody that doesn't know, she got me this alarm thing that it 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 blinks when I haven't drank some water. You see, it picked it up. I picked it up to show you the blinking light and moved it over, and then I just set it back down without tipping it up. And it's just blinking like a madman now. Like, you didn't drink. You pretend you drank any. That's beyond his nose, but we'll go with it for right now. Now, 
I didn't intend for his nose to be so um, blue-green pink. <laughs> Hi, Sally. They've never met you. I don't think. What's the matter, girl? She's running around. Acting crazy. Oh, man. I hate when I drop it on the paper because then it gets in the glue. All the fiddly bits. Oh, my goodness gracious. Sally is the cat that nobody would take because she looks like she's all black. That my son rescued from inside someone's car well. And I don't know. The vet seemed to think she might have a food allergy. But she, Greg hadn't had her on flea meds because she doesn't go outside. And he said, well, let's make sure she doesn't have fleas. Let's see if we can get that under control. So she's doing better. She's not digging as bad, but she still digs on herself really bad. So she's she's got a lot of missing hair. She's kind of an odd little creature. And she's got white on her tummy. It doesn't matter that it's been all pulled off by her right now, but... All right, that piece will fit there if I can get it back loose to put enough glue to hold it. The fiddly bits on this cat here. But Sally is also never still, so that's one reason I don't have pictures of, of them because they won't be still long enough. Her and Cole are little fidget, fidget machines. There's that. And then under his chin, down here, he's got this section. See, the picture is really dark. But when I tip it up and the light hits it, there's almost like a, a purpley pink area under there. So I'm thinking maybe something darker in the purple colors would be good. It's paper pieces. It's painty papers that I've created on the gel plate that I'm tearing up to um, use on, on this. And this is my one of my three cats. I've already done this. This is the last one I need to finish. So maybe in the other envelope. I have another envelope of painty paper. What did I do with it? That is weird. Oh, maybe that's it over here. Oh no, this is this is not it. whole bag of different please hold oh there it is never mind I found it I had slid it in next to the file cabinet need something that's a dark pink for under his chin. A dark pinky color. That reads almost white. I think that would work.
Welcome to my channel, by the way, to anybody that may be new that I have not caught coming in. All these little teeny pieces. Well, getting some more boom, boom, booms in the background. Some of this I can um, clean up just a little bit with, you know, Posca pens and such. Thank you, Janet. Is Roy here? Hi, Roy. Working on Tippy today. All right, so now we need to just work on the white values, I think. In here, so we can put this stuff up. I need to sit down again. This is one of those things I almost need to do a little bit, walk away, come back. I'm gonna go ahead and take a drink, see what you guys have been talking about. Yeah, my sister got me this little thing, and every so often it'll flash light. I can't remember what it's called. I had the tag sitting right here somewhere. I probably did something, put it up somewhere safe. I think it's called an ULLA, U-L-L-A. And it really has helped me increase my water intake, which is really good for the diabetes too. So let's put some of the darker papers on here to put in tippy sh and that's all these places I've made like a light um, a light bit on so we could glue that whole thing down there the thing with this paper is it's very old and fragile so I almost have to put the put too much glue on the image that I'm working on and then put this down. And remember, you can go outside the lines along the face because you're going to trim that away anyway. And you don't want to get it too wet because that stretches the tra uh, tracing paper. Bernadette, are you being good? Hi, Sally. Sally, will you come here and Sally? Hi, Mimi. Mommy. She's very shy. She might run off. Hi, guys. There she is. Sally. Sally Boo. Come here, Sally. Come here. Kitty, 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 kitty. You leave it? Sally. Sally. She's like, no, you want me too bad. She's she's gone. We'll put you back down on the table. Whoa, hang on, hang on. Hang on for dear life. All right. 
Yeah, this is some kind of really old paper, and if you handle it too much, it just kind of falls apart in your fingers. So, trying not to handle it as much. Let's see. Is this going to be a perfect uh, copy of Tippy? Probably not, but it will be close enough that it will look like him. At least I think they do. I think they look like my cats. Sally, do you need to go out in the bonus room? Is that what you keep coming in here? You want to go out in the bonus room? Honey, come on. You got here? Come on, honey. Sally, really? No? She doesn't usually stay with me. The last couple days, it's like she... She's my son's cat, but... Greg says it's because I spoil them. I don't know what he's talking about, but anyway... Greg said, I, I feed them too much. He tells me I feed them too much. And I'm like, well, you don't feed them at all. He's like, you feed them too much. Now, Piper, she is an overachiever in the eating department. She's our porky little princess. That's what we call her, porky little princess. That cat wall. She's cute. Let's see here. I know it's not good for them to get that heavy, but she kind of eats constantly. And it's hard to take the food away from the grazers, you know, the ones that they eat a little bit and then they go do their about their business, getting into things. And Oh, I like that side of the paper better. Let's go. Somebody made a comment that they I can't remember who said it, but that they couldn't eat soup this time of year. But I find that when I eat the hot soups, I don't feel as hot when I go outside and stuff. Maybe it's just me, but. Oops, don't lose that. I don't have very much of that old paper left. I'm hoping I have enough here to do all of Tippy's shadow spots. There we go. All right, so I'm going to turn him and do this spot over here, which is almost his whole side of his face, but since that side of his face is not there, yeah. There was a farm at the farmer's market called McCarley's Farms. I want to go back there next weekend and see if they have, they had these heirloom tomatoes on the table, and I thought about buying a couple, but then I didn't. And then I cut myself, but they were kind of a purple color. And, you know, you can tell when they're an heirloom variety because they're not perfectly round and all of that kind of stuff. But I bet they would be tasty. All right, he's got kind of a shadowy spot just up here on his eyeball. And I'm just going to use this whole piece of paper right there. And bang, that's done. Let's see what else we got here. And 
I think. I can find to put this on here. And then I need another piece down here that can go kind of off the page because I'm going to trim that away because this will be the side of the um, canvas. I'm going to pull that off because I need an extra piece. And then we just have to fill in with all the different book pages. So we'll put this piece here. But we were talking, Scott and I were talking about there's an artisan market that's near where we first lived together. That that year of shacking up that drove his mom crazy. Um, there's a, a, a artisan market. I want to check it out next Saturday. It's Saturday mornings. And it looks really dank and cool. It'd be kind of cool to hang out in our old digs where we used to hang out when we were in our 20s. Okay, let's see. Oh, I, I bet they're tasty. So next Saturday, we, I might do a video of our adventures around to the South Carolina State Farmer's Market and the Artisan's Market and see what kind of things we see. And this little piece can come down here and go right there. It almost needs one more little tiny piece of that darker pink under his lip there. I'm just going to use a piece of this. That's another reason to wait for it to dry is sometimes the glue covers up areas. that you can't see until it clears. That almost looks like his tongue might be hanging out there, but there you go. All right. So now under his under his cheeks here, I wanted to use another color so it's kind of denotes where his cheeks are. So let's see. Just when I think I have all the colors I could possibly need. I really think that would work.
See what I was, was saying? This is all kind of fiddly. Fiddly bits. That's what Scott says when he comes in. I'm doing one of these. You go, oh, you're doing a fiddly bits. Fiddly bits. Here. I'm going to be clear coating these, so I'm hoping all these bits that might not be down all the way will get caught in the clear coat. That's my thinking, my hope. this little bit off right there. And before I can do the painty paper and cut him out and all, he's going to have to dry real good. So once I get this filled in, what time is it anyway? 514. So I've been doing this for an hour and he's so far he's got cheeks, ears, Eyes, nose, he's getting close to me and looking like Tippy, isn't he? There we go. All right. It'd be interesting to do some, see if I could do like some of the nieces and nephews. That could be fun. And but boy, you'd have to have a whole bunch of different skin tones. Hi, Suze. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to confuse you, Janet. <laughs> yeah, not tonight. Tonight is Beth. She'll be on shortly. I think she comes on at 6 o'clock Eastern, doesn't she? Unless I'm going to go ahead and get off at 6 o'clock, whether I'm done or not. Might need a break anyway. That looks good. Just fill Tippy in here. Usually the main reason I wanted to do this is because Violet, she really likes to see the process. And I thought maybe some others would as well. And this way you're getting me to see me put all the paper on. And silly me thought Tippy would be easy because he's mostly white. But then you got the pink of his ears and the gray and his eyes and his little mouth area and yeah, it starts not being just mostly white. Reality sets in.
when I get to this point, because I don't know where it's going to land, I think it's, um, it's easier to put the glue on the paper than the other way around. I was trying to figure out how I could express the white sections on the cats. And then I said, duh, book paper. It's white. It has, doesn't have any color added. It's got print on it. So I thought, oh, that'd be really cool to do that. Oh, now he's got a bit of music paper on there. And I'm sorry about it going, Nettie. Nettie's in the house. Now I've got sticky, gluey fingers. Got these wet ones at uh, Dollar Tree. It's... Uh, they're kind of weird. I just got so much glue on me. It, it eventually gets to a point where there's no, there's so much glue that no amount of wet one is going to get it off and you just have to go wash. Hands. That'd be perfect right there. Kind of audition where they're going to go. The napkin that I used, it was by Deco Art, and it says made for napkins on it. I think I used all of mine or I'd pull the bottle out and show you, but I, I, I think I've used it all. That was gifted to me by Peg Robinson for guessing where her and their gang were hanging out. I said, you're at South Carolina beach. And they were, I guessed correctly. They were probably about three hours from me. Oh, you were talking about the glues? I'm trying to hurry so that I'm off in time for Beth to come on. That one in particular doesn't tear the napkins like regular Mod Podge does. It doesn't seem as uh, liquefied. You know, it doesn't turn the napkin into just like paste or something. Here comes Tippy. He's going to be pretty. <laughs> this was some kind of math book, I think or something it says chair and I got too much blue let's see here oh yeah that'll work better okay got the music in me Tanya.
Uh, oh, okay. All right. I'm, I'm such a dork. I was trying to figure out what you were talking about. Oh, that's cool. So the journal I sent you, you turned into a napkin journal is what you're saying. Durr, Becky. <laughs> that sounds cool. I'm glad you could put it to use. Yes, they were doing a good job, Barbara. I just got a wild hair and decided to do this today since um, my lives on Wednesday are kind of taken over by the summer project that I decided to do with y'all. So I said, well, if I want to do anything else, I'm going to have to go live at a different time and hope I don't step on anybody's toes. I try not to come on when anybody else is on, but today I just had a wild hair and I just said, I'm going to do it. And if people can't make it, they can't make it. They can always watch the replay. I know a lot of us put, put folks on that are live and then we just go about our business doing our thing in the background anyway and try to chime in and chat. But a lot of time I just put somebody on and I'm just there you know, listening and working along on my own project. And that's one thing about the live chat rooms is you can work along on your project and you can talk. You don't have to stop what you're doing to take time to type it in and all that. You can just say, hey, I know, blah, 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 and say whatever you want to say. And you get instant feedback. You don't, you don't get lost in the chat as it scrolls on by, that kind of thing. And if you come back and watch the replay, take time to leave a comment and leave a thumbs up and that kind of thing if you like what you see. Because a lot of time, those of us that do lives, those videos, the live videos like this one, rarely get comments. And now I know the chat counts and all of that, but it is nice to know that somebody's come back and seen that video again and it's taken the time to take leave a thumbs up and a comment and I like to respond to the comments too And it's okay, I've gone past the line because you can always trim it back. Let's just see if I can get more put down here.
And you can see how it curls up too. That'll all go away once you glue it down on the other. And when I when I glue this to the canvas, I might come back live um, once this is dry, but it, it probably won't be till Friday. I might do a Friday live uh, after Mary signs off or something and show how I put it on the canvas and stuff. But when I put it on the canvas, because this is pretty weighty, I will use this um, heavy gel medium to put the cutout of Tippy onto the actual canvas. to make sure he sticks. Um, actually, I'm using these. They come in like a three pack. So Tippy will look like Callie eventually. So it's a, I think a five by seven and half inch deep is what I'm using. I did three canvases. I did the backgrounds so that they all have the same background. And what I do after I put the, um, the, the cat, put the cat onto there, this is what it looks like. These were my backgrounds. I'll put Tippy on here and then I'll take a baby wipe and I'll rub really hard and remove some of the white so it exposes my background better. This is Howard. And that way it gets some of the artsy bits of it showing again. And they'll be really cute all lined up together on the wall. Yes, I'm going to cut him out. See, that's why you, your outer line, you want to make it dark enough so you can see it through the, the tracing paper. And you cut him out, and then I'm going to use that gel medium to attach him to the canvas. Hi, Holly. I am tr kind of trying to stay along the jowl, his jawline, so that when I do some stabilo all work, I can see, you know, kind of where his, the jaw area is, is why I'm trying to fit to the line. These will hang right next to that frame. If I don't remember, but I've got that frame with the pictures of the three of them that I got at Goodwill. I'm going to put these above or below that. And what I was thinking, Holly, I don't know if you, you weren't here for the stupid cup is blinking again. Um, I'm going to, I'm thinking of doing Greg a canvas of his three cats. 
where they're all on the same canvas. Because I can trace them onto separate pieces and then put them together. Or I can just put them together, piece of tracing paper, and then apply it to a canvas, is my thinking. How are you doing with collecting the monthly flower framed prints? I just need July. I need July and then I'll be able to put my, my whole wall of those floral prints up. That's the last one we need is July. And can we find it? Nope. So I have that collection. It's ready to be put on the wall, but I'm missing one. I keep checking every time we go to a Goodwill or a, a, another thrift store. I look for the July. I find I find other months again, but I can't seem to find that one. You should do cats, but it would take a while. My old boss caught a kitten, and she was wanting me to take him, and I was like, "We're full." <laughs> and um, over the weekend, we noticed. Kids next door. I call them kids. They're all 20 and early 30 somethings. But it's like a, it's just a bunch of kids live next door. I don't know if they're renting or what. But they've got a, two or three cats that run around outside. Well, then I noticed in one of the bedroom windows, they've got kittens. Yes, I can. Here's Kelly. And here's Howard. And then they're actually pulled from pictures that I took of them. So what I did is I laid the tracing paper over top and then just traced around the outer edges and then noted where like her orange is and um, the different values of the orange. I got pretty close. It's not perfect. Oh, the flower prints. Um, hang on just a sec. We've got them in different sizes. So let's see here. Okay. Here's one of the smaller ones. I won't drag the big ones up. Uh, we've got in our two birth months in the great big ones, but this is the flowers that I was looking for. And this is September. And I'm thinking of taking the frames that aren't gold and spray painting them gold so that I can have all gold frames on them. Sorry, I misunderstood. But yeah, it's um, this was that did the all of them, but it's like my brain can only do one thing at a time. <laughs> and there goes um, Janet asking who they were done by. I don't remember. Kendra told me at one time, and I've I've forgotten. That's another one we I haven't seen in a while. It's Kendra. I want to add her to the list. Is there anybody else we haven't heard from in a while? Danny Coleman. I'll add her to the list. Happy mail package to to the gal we haven't heard from. I get to thinking about them, and I'm like, well, what to them? Where are they? Uh -oh, I didn't. My fingers are so coated with glue, I can't tell if I've gotten it on everywhere or not. I'm going to start sticking to everything. Come on, Tippy, you got to get pulled together here, dude. The 
the other day I was thinking of just um, putting them all up and hoping I can find, because I want to do them like, like you would see a collection in a museum, you know, a whole, whole wall of them. So I, until I know how big I'm able to find the July, it's hard to lay the wall out. You know, I got to know what I'm working with before I can put them up on the wall. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Uh oh, there's one right there. Let's put this on here. Yeah, I've got them setting against the wall in the dining room by the hutch. They're all just between the hutch and the wall, waiting for the July to show up. Some of those I only paid like $1.89 for the prints, but they're in kind of nasty frames. But I figured if I painted them gold, you know, that would that would fix it. This one, I'm going to just go off the page. How am I doing on time? 5.39. I got about 20 minutes, and I'm going to sign off so that everybody can be ready for bath. Oh, I got to do down here yet, too. Might not get him done. Oh, it's sticking to you. I think all this wet one is doing is spreading it. I'd been thinking I could have done just music paper on the very bottom. That would denote his body. Robert Ferber. There you go. Tanya found it for me. Robert Ferber. Oh. It's not going to move without tearing. Ugh! Stupid fingers are wet. Denote.
Sewing pearls on the mermaid, Beth says. Beth, I'm going off at six, so everybody can pop on over to you then. And uh, I'm going to get my supper and eat and watch. Ah! And at some point, I got to finish watching Tanya and Barb, too. Twenty-three dollars, oy vey! <laughs> and I haven't paid that much for any of them. <laughs> but collection, would it not? I have not paid anywhere near that for any of the prints I've gotten. The glue is driving me bonker. It goes up from there. Wow. Scott was talking about he'd like to um, go on a long weekend somewhere. So we're trying to figure out somewhere we might like to visit. All of these are ripped too small, really. Walmart carries them. Well, I was looking for the older ones in in, in old gray, uh, gold frames. I only need the one. I guess I could pay $23 for it. But is it framed? Oh, the glue is driving me mad. You're all looking. <laughs> Tippy buddy, you're giving me a hard time here and you're even, not even in here. I've got so much glue on my hands that I'm sticking to everything, but I want to finish this. I got some more up by this other eye. Oh, maybe what I need to do is quit trying to work in the same area. keep thinking oh I'll find that last print it'll be at a wonderful little little store somewhere hi Riri hi Candy oh I've been using wipes but it, it's not helping Riri <laughs> um, I think I've just got so much glue the wipe just reactivates the dryer of the of the glue kind of a mess once it starts piling up. 
Because even my fingers are starting to stick together. I think it's time to wrap it up and uh, <laughs> wash my hands and let this bad boy t dry for a while. Tippy, you're a bad boy. And it can go off the edge here anyway. So I'm just going to put that piece on there. And I'll trim all that away anyway. Let's see. You know, a little thin piece up here. And it just has to stick. Like that. Because keep in mind, I will, I'm going to cut him out. Of the tracing paper and then once he's good and dry I will put him on his canvas and I will use the Posca pens to bring his fur alive Bye, Tanya. I'll watch the rest of you all when I'm working on something and I just need you all in the background. <laughs> oh, somebody's digging on my chair. Is it Callie or Howard? Callie. We're about got Mr. Mr. Tippy put together here. I appreciate y'all watching and hanging with me for a little bit this afternoon. T um, guys, stop fighting. No fighting. Be a good girl. I know. You got want me to get Tippy in and feed you guys lunch. I know. Tippy probably is ready to come in. The sun's probably eating him up out there. Y'all wanted the blanket down that blocks the sun. And then the sun comes in and gets you. Stop digging on my chair. You're supposed to be well behaved, remember? All right, who's growling? She's like, that black cat's in here. I'm going to growl at her. Be nice. Sally's a sweet girl. I know she looks funny because she pulls her hair out, but she's a good girl. Callie? Callie and Piper, they're the divas. They're my little divas in here. Ah! Come on. I think my finger's glued to the page over here. It does look kind of crispy and crunchy.
Callie. Be a good girl. I'm almost done. And I'll get Tippy in and give you guys a can of food. And see, you're not the only ones that ha has bossy cats. Oh my goodness, the language I'm hearing in the background. Sally, is that you? It is. I was blaming it on Callie. Sally. Oh, for crying out loud. I don't know if y'all can hear that throaty. Rawr. She's standing her ground. Usually she just runs. Holly can relate to the what's happening in the background, I'm sure. Guys, my goodness. You think you don't even like each other or something. Oh my goodness, I think Tippy's about full of full here. I still have this it's got a little bit there. Oh. I'm gonna have to feed these cats. Put put Sally back out in the bonus room. Oh, for crying out loud, literally. If I have to add a few more pieces of paper, I will. But I think it needs to dry right now because I am just sticking to it. Yeah, it's just going to have to set up. Because I'm sticking to it. All right. There's Tippy. Yay. And I want to thank you guys for hanging with me. So this is the part that will migrate to the canvas. And this is the picture that I used to do it with. And I will do another live at some point to put him together. It may be very, very impromptu like this one was. But if you're doing the summer journal, we're doing that tomorrow at 3.30. See, there's so much glue on my fingers that it's going to take more than a wet one. So thank you guys for hanging with me. And um, I will come back on another day and we'll put it together so you guys can see how it goes together. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Hop over to Beth's. Good night.